Star County Prosecutor's Office is charged with the responsibility of prohibiting um, sex offenders from establishing residence uh, within a thousand feet of uh, any school premise or preschool or child care center. Um, certainly, we believe that that is an appropriate mandate. However, um, there is a legal process uh, by which uh, the prosecutor's office, if somebody does not voluntarily move, who is in violation of that particular section, they literally uh, have to evict the person. Um, and there is no uh, opportunity to recover the cost. The next ones and are submitted by the Stark County Commissioner's offices. Um, and so I imagine if you have any questions, you could direct those uh, to Mr. Hankey or our commissioners. Um, the county is required to appropriate uh, a sum of money not to exceed $500 per eligible agency in defraying the expenses of Memorial Day. Uh, the annual cost to our county is $30,000. Uh, did that mean that's labor and costs is the way that's I read that? Okay. Total amount of money. Total amount of money. Um, the proposal is that the Veterans Services Commission um, should absorb uh, this response. Additionally, the county is uh, mandated to pay for repairs to veterans' memorials. Um, the cost to repair the Alliance Veterans Memorial <coughs> is $24,900. Um, the commissioner suggests that this should not be a county government cost unless, unless it is a government memorial, and then it should be paid by the Veterans Service Commission. Uh, currently, the county is mandated to pay for anti-tuberculosis uh, medication and follow-up services. Uh, this particular cost is $2,100 uh, and other costs of $312. Uh, the proposal is that this program uh, should be eliminated and not be a responsibility of uh, the county government. Revised code mandates uh, reimbursement to county businesses for the adjustment of their registers as a result of any change in the sales tax. Um, this cost uh, in 2009 was $15,131. Um, this would only occur in a year where there is a change. Is it only an increase only or increase. any change? Only, only an increase, increase in the sales tax. Uh, the commissioner suggests that with the advent of computerized cash registers, this law is archaic and should be repealed. Um, with respect to the Veterans Services Commission, um, it mandates the funding of the commission um, in an amount uh, not to exceed five-tenths of a mil per dollar on the assessed value of property in the county. Um, <coughs> there was a time when this law um, indicated that the county would provide a reasonable budget without a mandate uh, for <coughs> those services. Um, basically, um, I feel, I think, speak for the commissioners that they somewhat feel hostage by that um, thing and they have no bargaining power. The Ohio Housing Trust Fund was created by our legislature back uh, in 2005. It was a pro well before that, but go ahead. Oh, it says it was amended to create it. The Ohio Housing Trust Fund always existed. It was back to the 90s. 90s? Early 90s. Early 90s. Okay. We appreciate the longevity of your service and the historical <laughs> perspective you add to this. Thank you, gentlemen. In any event, um, the recorder's office is required to collect certain fees, split them out uh, half for the state and, and half here. The money that they send to the state, they do receive a 1% um, return for the administration of this process. However, um, the frustration is that that doesn't cover the amount of time it takes them to balance this account on a daily basis, balance it on a quarterly basis, balance it on a yearly basis as required, and then um, to pay the state their portion. Uh, the one 
concern uh, also is uh, they indicate that they send anywhere from one to two million dollars a year to the Ohio Trust Fund. Um, the way that is is administered, we have, they say, and I don't know, I don't really understand this one as clearly as some of the other ones, and perhaps you can enlighten us. Um, they have no real way of knowing how much of the money that Star County, our people here, send to the Ohio Trust Fund actually comes back to Star County, and we certainly have um, blighted and impoverished areas, and um, we should be getting money. Basically, um, when documents, <clears throat> each county um, is enabled is enabled to establish uh, guidelines for recording of documents. In other words, um, we went through a big change. I'm looking at some of the lawyers here, where uh, we used to file certain things in the long, um, long form, and our county recorder's office went to an eight and a half by 11, uh, very standard form. The problem is that not all the counties have standardization. And if somebody from another county attempts to file something with the Stark County Recorder's Office and it doesn't meet our requirements, then um, we do have the ability to charge an additional $20 fee. Ten of that goes to the state, ten of it goes to the county uh, general fund. We aren't really able to um, uh, I, I don't think they're actually able to really identify exactly how much money this amounts to. However, however um, the labor time um, certainly exceeds the measly $10 that we get to keep to uh, take this. Um, it re it's basically created more work when it comes to recording, balancing, and distributing money to the state. We suggest that the state of Ohio take more control of the standardization requirements and provide concrete guidelines for all 88 counties uh, to follow instead of leaving it up to uh, each county. Basically, uniformity throughout the state of Ohio. To me, that's a simple efficiency of government uh, that, that should be looked uh, The at. Medicaid estate recovery uh, mandate. Um, when a document that comes in falls under the criteria of this particular program, there is a very uh, specific process that has to be followed. Um, there is cost involved for the recorder's office having to provide uh, all the copies uh, that get mailed uh, to the state of Ohio uh, at our cost, all the postage uh, to mail to them, also the labor cost involved in carrying out the provisions of this section. We suggest that um, we receive some kind of payment back from the state for providing this service to them. Uh, at least minimally, uh, Mr. Gonzalez suggested that they should um, revise the law in that it requires that a particular form uh, be received before property is transferred. Um, However, they state that it's the recorder's duty to collect the form, and they say that the problem arises in that by the time they receive the form, the property has already been transferred by the auditor's office. So um, some review of that law we believe is in order. And last but not least from the Star County Recorder's Office, um, uh, the requirement for our, our record keeping indicates that um, Records, I'm going to say it basically in layman's terms, we're required to keep records that can be read by the naked eye. Um, in other words, um, either a paper record or microfilm. Um, now, obviously, most people are, are accustomed to reading microfilm with the um, assistance of a machine, um, but technically it could be read with the naked eye with a magnifying glass. So... But in the digital age, uh, we suggest that the state uh, take a look at the standard at standardizing digital images as a way to um, achieve this uh, record keeping requirement. Um, 
until there are standards for this type of media, uh, we will have no choice um, but to continue using microfilm, which is not only costly in producing, but also in storing. Obviously, less costly in storing as opposed to paper, but still producing and retaining. And the final mandate that we would like to bring to the attention of our legislators comes from the Star County Treasurer's Office in the publishing of tax rates. Um, the code requires that um, a list of the tax rates, tax reduction factors, and effective tax rates assessed and applied against each of the properties uh, in the county um, be uh, um, published in a newspaper um, having a general circulation in the county, um, and it's all described in, in Section 5721 uh, of the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, the cost of uh, to the county, uh, due to the size of the schedule, um, is approximately $5,000 annually. Um, the treasurer's office suggests that in lieu of publishing the actual tax rate schedule, uh, perhaps uh, just a statement of where that can be viewed be published. In other words, they say the 2010 uh, year tax rate schedule can be viewed in the treasurer and auditor's offices, give a location and the website addresses.